Thank you everyone for coming to my presentation tonight on promoting bird diversity in forest plantations. I'd first like to acknowledge the Wurundjeri and Gunditjmara people, the traditional owners on which this uh, work took place and pay my respects to their elders past, present and emerging. I'd also like to acknowledge the wide range of people that helped contribute to the success of this program, uh, project over the past three years. So plantations. Plantation at areas where trees are grown. They're grown to a particular size and height after which they're harvested for wood and pulp products. Um, besides plantations, there's also native forests that are logged for these products. However, recently in Victoria, there's been a ban on native logging, and this has put uh, more pressure on plantations to continue to provide these products. So um, therefore, there's a, a kind of a knowledge gap on finding ways to sustainably manage plantations, not only for their longevity, but also for conservation for the wildlife species that exist and uh, within and around these areas. So my thesis aimed to understand ways to improve bird diversity uh, and the biodiversity value of plantations. So I focused on the Green Triangle, uh, which is out in Western Victoria. Um, and within this region, there's a large amount of blue gum plantation. Um, so blue gum plantations are not native to the region, but they're native to Tasmania. The Green Triangle is also home to a range of bird species. So more than 200 bird species have been observed here and they come from a range of different groups. So there's species that prefer forests, so they need treed structures for their foraging and their nesting. There's also some species that require less trees, so they prefer more open habitat. There's variation in diet, such as those that eat insects or small little brown birds. And there's also variation in nesting types, such as those that rely on large old trees that have nesting hollows in them. So my thesis was broken into three main questions. Firstly, how much habitat is enough for birds in these forestry landscapes? What should this habitat look like to conserve individual birds? And how can we encourage land managers to encourage biodiversity? So what are the benefits they can also gain? So the first question, how much habitat is enough? So for this question, I wanted to determine how birds respond to native vegetation that still exists across these forestry landscapes. So despite planting trees, there's still native vegetation that's embedded and surrounding these areas. And I also wanted to determine um, how different birds group, bird groups um, differ in their relationship with native vegetation. And from these, directly um, go back to managers and tell them how much native vegetation um, that they should save for these area-based targets for bird conservation. So the design of my study uh, looked like this figure. So you can see here the scattered um, amounts of blue gum plantation and native vegetation. You can see the black circles there represent the 36 study landscapes that I observed birds at, with the four circles at the bottom demonstrating the variation in native vegetation within these landscapes. So on the left-hand side, you have 0% of native vegetation all the way up to 72%. Those purple circles represent the bird survey sites um, that I assessed over a two-year period. And from all the data that I collected with my field volunteers, we analysed four bird groups. So habitat preferences, uh, variation in diet, foraging location and nesting. And I'll just take you through one of those uh, group results. So on the graph here, you can see along the X axis or the horizontal uh, line, you can see that the amount of native remnant vegetation and on the Y horizontal, uh, vertical axis, sorry, um, we can see the number of bird species or species richness. So each circle there represents a different study landscape. And you can see for all species and forest species, we have a rapid incline in the number of species to about 10%, and then we kind of get a plateau. Uh, for open country species, we don't see these species responding to increasing amount of native vegetation, and we can see that as just the flat line. So from these modelled responses, we can draw area-based targets. And I looked at um, trying to attract 90% of the birds we observed. So you can see that the forest group there is the most sensitive and requires 17% of the landscape to be composed of native vegetation. So if we know that birds need native vegetation, what should this habitat look like? So for this question to be answered, instead of looking at bird groups, I focused in on individual species. So again, I looked at the amount of native vegetation I also looked at how this native vegetation was arranged, whether it was clumped or whether it was dispersed, which affects um, birds' ability to move throughout a landscape. And I also looked at the diversity of different land uses. So as well as native vegetation within the landscape, there's plantation, there's farmland, there's different uh, water sources as well. So I was able to analyse 27 of the species of the 107 um, I observed. And I was looking at both the presence and abundance of these birds. So if they were there and how many were there. 
and I analyze these into the relationship uh, with the three variables, the amount, the configuration, and the diversity. So I found that five species um, strongly responded to the amount of remnant vegetation. For example, the white-throated tree creeper. So you can see on this figure here, it increases in its presence at around 10%, and then you um, uh, get these white-throated tree creepers occurring in the landscape because of this unique structure um, in the remnant vegetation, which is this rough bark eucalypt trees. So they use these trees to forage in, and in blue gum plantations, they have smooth bark, so you don't have these foraging opportunities. In terms of configuration or how connected these native pet, uh, vegetation patches are, I found six species responded to this element. For example, the white-browed scrub wren. So this is a small bird that relies on understory or bushes um, in the low, lower area of the vegetation structure um, to forage and nest within. So you can see in the figure that as you move from left to right, uh, you get more landscapes that have well-connected patches. In terms of landscape diversity or the number of land uses within a uh, landscape, um, I found two species responding to this variable. For example, the white-faced heron. So the white-faced heron is a water bird, so it's likely responding to the emergence of water bodies as these landscapes become more diverse. So if we know that birds prefer native vegetation and we can understand how it should look like, how can we convince land managers to promote conservation in these working lands? So one... Uh, way we can do this is through insect attack. So plantations are really vulnerable to insect attack because they're mostly monocultures and they have uh, really tight spacing between trees. So this is often managed with insecticide, um, but that can be harmful to the environment and it also costs a lot. Uh, an alternative way is to retain native vegetation, which can indirectly attack these insect predators and decrease the amount of insecticide that we apply. One of the most damaging insects um, in the blue gum plantations um, is a species known as the autumn gum moth. So it's most damaging in its caterpillar stage or its larval stage, where it skeletonizes or strips the leaves bare of young blue gum plant, um, plantations. So for this question, I worked with forest health managers who assess these um, areas for different insects um, to analyze the presence of this autumn gum moth and the severity of its damage. And I wanted to see if the distance to different sized um, patches of native vegetation as well as birds could decrease this attack. So I didn't find anything for the birds, but I did find something for the native vegetation. So on these figures here, if you're further away from that vertical gray dashed line, we're gonna have a strong response. So I found that the distance, the nearest patch of native vegetation that was at least one hectare in size, so that's 100 metres by 100 metres, um, was important for decreasing both the presence of the autumn gum moth as well as its severity. So you should make plantations close to native vegetation to decrease this insect attack. So my thesis had four major findings. So the first was that area-based targets can be set for bird groups, and this will help forest managers help achieve nature-positive objectives. I was able to pinpoint the native vegetation needs of individual bird species in terms of the amount required, uh, the configuration or connectiveness of patch and land use types. I discovered that size and proximity to native vegetation will help control insect pests, and this can benefit uh, land managers directly. And that biodiversity does exist within plantations um, that can benefit both people and nature. Thank you. <laughs>